It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, FSN West 2 presents the Dodgers as they take on the Colorado Rockies. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening. The Dodgers come home for an exciting road trip, having played San Diego and San Francisco, and they're two and a half games ahead of the Giants. However, they have a big fight on their hands with Colorado. They've played 15 times. Dodgers have won eight, and the Rockies have won seven. One consolation for the Dodgers, beginning a four-game series at home, the Rockies have had a lot of trouble here. The Dodgers over the last couple of years have beaten them 18 out of 24 here at Dodgers Stadium. However, on the mound, a veteran, and that would be Sean Estes. However, his lifetime might be a little shoddy. He is 3-0 and against the Dodgers this year. Sean is trying to be the first pitcher in Rockies franchise history to beat the Dodgers four times in one season. The Dodgers counter with young Edwin Jackson, who is 2-1. and one. Well, we know what we have seen and what the Dodgers have done. We'll take a look at what's ahead right after this. Welcome back to Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers coming home from their visit to San Diego and San Francisco and find themselves two and a half games atop the heap. We already saw the highlights of the recently played series in San Francisco, but this is what's ahead. Tonight, Sean Estes trying to beat the Dodgers for the fourth time this year. Young Edwin Jackson will go to the mound. Then tomorrow night Jamie Wright and Kaz is she and is she has always been questionable certainly the last month Wednesday Jeff Francis he is the wonderkind for Colorado nothing but great things to hear about him and it would be interesting and he could provide a formidable challenge against Odalis Perez and then the slider sinker ball pitcher Jason Jennings question there is Jose Lima. You know, he has that hairline fracture of the thumb, and he instinctively stuck that right hand in the way of a one hopper in San Francisco. We have to find out to see how he is. Starting tomorrow night, Jason Schmidt, who has been good, but not as sharp as normal ever since he suffered the groin pull, he'll be against the Padres and Brian Lawrence. Noel Lowry who is undefeated. The kid is 6-0, and oh, and he'll go up against the veteran David Wells. Remember, the Dodgers did not see Wells in San Diego. He had flu-like symptoms. And finally, Thursday, the Giants are going to roll the dice, and Jerome Williams will be going against Adam Eaton. We're happy to see the children are here. They add so much to the importance of a big game, and that's what this one is, and we'll be back with it right after this. With the Dodgers. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. The Dodgers are home, breaking the seal on the final homestand of the year. Four with Colorado and the weekend with San Francisco. Tonight is also 2004 Chinese American Community Night at Dodger Stadium, with over 3,000 community members, along with families and friends, to honor the Chinese American community. The Colorado Rockies come to town and they played the Dodgers tough. The Dodgers have managed to win 8 of 15. Aaron Miles, Royce Clayton at short, and Todd Helton. Vinny Castilla, Jeremy Burnitz, and J.D. Klosser. Brad Hoff is in right field. George Piedra is in left. And Sean Estes on the mound. On the mound for the Dodgers is Edwin Jackson with a record of 2 and 1. He had no decision in a start against Colorado on the 19th. Actually he allowed five runs on six hits and four and two third innings. And that was the first time in his career he had allowed more than two earned runs in a start. Against Colorado then no record. And it will be interesting to see how he reacts tonight. Pretty much of an important game. Tonight the Giants are idle and that's why there's a half a game in the standing. So tonight's game will give the Dodgers either a two or a three game lead. Steve Finley, an Iron Man in this day and age in 156 games and at 39 he has to have some iron. He's also a collector of gold gloves and he has meant a great deal in center field for the Dodgers. 
The infield, Green, Hernandez, Asturias, and Beltre, Worth, Finley, and Bradley, David Ross behind the plate, and Edwin Jackson on the mound. Jose Hernandez is one of the stronger hitters against left-hand pitching, which is why he's in there. Alex Cora sits down. Jose Hernandez is hitting 325 with 11 home runs and 20 RBIs against left-handers, and he's got a good one to go up against tonight in Sean Estes. So Edwin Jackson ready to go to work, and Aaron Miles, a very good second baseman, hitting 294, starts it off. Little left-hand hitter takes a strike, and the count on one. Aaron Miles is from Pittsburgh, but it's Pittsburgh, California. Went to Antioch High School up there. Swings and hits one foul into the seats off third, and the count 0-2. Aaron Miles, in a sense, about the same size as Ray Durham of the Giants, not with the power of Durham. He does have a half a dozen home runs, takes off the plate. But like Ray Durham, he's 5'8 and makes it tough on him. His dad, a former boxer who turned microbiologist, the reason he turned, he sparred with George Foreman. And the young Miles takes high and away in the count two and two. Dodgers have won eight of 15 from the Rockies, winning three of five here, but splitting 10 in Colorado. Now the 2 2 pitch coming up to Aaron Miles. Edwin Jackson's fastball is fouled back. You might say off the top of your head, well, you split 10 in Colorado. You've done very well. But you have to remember, for the Colorado Rockies this year, they had the worst home record in franchise history. 2 2 pitch, and Miles fights another one off. Third, back into the crowd in the lower deck, and the count remains 2 and 2. On deck, Hitting third in the lineup, so he has Clayton in front of him, is Todd Helton, and this has not been a good ballpark for one of the top hitters in the league. Helton this year is hitting 153 at Dodger Stadium. Miles, meanwhile, hits one into center field for a base hit, and we are off and running. So Aaron Miles, a solid single to center, and the batter will be the veteran Royce Clayton. Aaron Miles, whether he would present a problem, well, he has stolen 12. So Miles at first, held on by Sean Green. And Royce Clayton, having a good year, he has 153 hits. He's also hitting 278, eight home runs, 53 RBIs. Out of a stretch goes Jackson. Clayton shows bunt, takes a strike, and the count 0 and 1. For Royce, he comes home. He was born in Burbank, went to Englewood High School and was a number one pick by the Giants back in 1988. So Royce Clayton waiting. All of a sudden, Royce is 34 years old. And the strike one pitch, he bunts foul. Clayton, among other things, doing an outstanding job defensively. He's working on a 52 game errorless streak. Of course, we saw Marquise Grissom. Drop a fly ball after a long run yesterday. That snapped a streak at 169. But for an outfielder, it's one thing. A shortstop, 52 is great. So Clayton with Miles at first, 0 and 2 the count to Royce. Jackson ready and deals. Fastball high and inside. Ball one. And the count one and two. So Jackson hitting 92 on the gun. So Clayton with Helton and Castilla to follow. The Dodgers have done what good teams do. They have really hurt teams that are under 500. Clayton takes inside. The Dodgers are 21 games above 500 against teams currently below 500. Who's on top? The teams you'd expect the Cardinals and the Yankees. Dodgers have also done a great deal. Here at Dodger Stadium, beating the Rockies 18 out of 24, and leading the way certainly in the last 18 games against the Rockies would be Adrian Beltre. So Royce Clayton waiting two and two the count. Jackson a quick turn and a throw, and diving back to the bag is Aaron Miles, and Clayton backs out. Two strikes on Royce, so we'll check and see 
and he strikes out a lot. For a fellow with only eight home runs, it's somewhat shocking that Clayton has struck out 120 times. Jackson ready, the pitch to Royce just off the plate, and the count three and two. So Clayton showing great discipline to take that pitch. And Edwin Jackson, 21 years old, on the 9th of September, makes his home in Columbus, Georgia. He was a center fielder in high school before he was converted to pitcher. And the young right hand already. Miles goes, and the pitch is grounded into right field because Hernandez had broken to cover. So Miles goes to third, and Edwin Jackson is in trouble here in the first inning. So that wasn't hit and run, that was run and hit with a three and two count. And with Hernandez breaking, the ball found its way into right field. So just like that, two on, nobody out, and the batter, Todd Helton. It comes as quite a shock because you're talking about one of the top hitters in the league, hitting 343, 32 home runs, 91 runs batted in, and believe it or not, he is hitting 153 against the Dodgers in Dodger Stadium. He takes low and away, ball one, and the count one and oh. Is this an off year? Nope. In his career, he's hitting only 213 at Dodger Stadium. Out of his stretch goes Jackson, and the 1 0 pitch to Helton. That's off the plate, ball two. It is so shocking to look at Todd Helton down at sea level. In 22 games at Dodger Stadium, that means going back over the last two years, he has two runs batted in. Dos, two. Two and all the count. Miles at third, Clayton at first, nobody out, just starting. Edwin Jackson out of a stretch, and the 2 0 pitch, held in swings, fouls it away off third out of play. I'm sure if you ask Clay, uh, Todd Helton, how come you struggle so much at Dodger Stadium? It would be a combination of good pitching and maybe he has trouble seeing the ball here. Whenever you talk to a hitter who does very well in a ballpark, he'll always say the same thing. Gosh, I really see the ball well there. Well, there's a reason I'm sure why he is struggling here. The 2 1 pitch coming up, and there goes Clayton, the pitch in the dirt, the throw offline, and just like that. There are runners at second and third. Miles holding as Clayton steals second. And young Edwin Jackson is in a mess. For Royce Clayton to steal, he is now 10 out of 15. So Edwin Jackson, who originally signed with the Dodgers, a sixth round pick only three years ago, and here he is pitching in a big game tonight. 3 1 pitch with first base open. Jackson delivers fastball whack to right Bradley going back it's over his head and it's off the scoreboard two runs are going to score and isn't that amazing Todd Helton with one swing of the bat drives in as many runs as he has driven in at Dodger Stadium in two years. So a single by Miles a single by Clayton a stolen base and then Helton doubles off the scoreboard. And both Miles and Clayton come in without a play, and the Dodgers find themselves down 2 0 here in the first inning. For Todd Helton, adding two more RBIs, that gives him 93. And the batter is Vinny Castillo. Vinny Castillo has 128 runs batted in, leading the majors, and he's 37 years old. Well, that's a story. Here comes Jackson and the pitch in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. If Castilla would lead the National League in RBIs, he would be the oldest third baseman since 1986 when Mike Schmidt drove in 119 runs. And Vinny fouls it away and the count 0 and 2. Also for Vinny Castilla, he comes here as a hot hitter. Not just a Coors Field hitter. In his last road games, number nine of them, he's hit 343 with seven home runs on the road and 14 RBIs. So a dangerous Vinny Castilla at the plate. Edwin Jackson strike two pitch is a little high. Ball one and the count one and two. Vinny Castilla. Always a threat has 132 home runs that he has hit at Coors Field. 
And now here he is trying to pick up Todd Hilton. The one two pitch Castilla swings fouls it back. Fastball alley all the way upstairs. That was a 94 mile an hour fastball. So Edwin Jackson gives up two singles, a stolen base, and a double. It is two to nothing Rockies. Helton at second base and a one and two count to Castilla. Here comes Jackson, and that swung on and popped up on the infield. And let's see, is it going to be Beltre? It looks that way. And Adrian makes a catch just to the left of the mound. So Castilla pops it up, one out. And the batter now will be Jeremy Burnett. Center fielder number 35, Jeremy Burnett. So Clayton, Helton, Castilla, and now Burnett. Jeremy has 37 home runs, at least 22 of them were hit at Coors, maybe a little more than that. He has 106 RBIs and 60 some odd at Coors. He has a half swing on a high fastball, fouls it back, and the count 0 and 1. The so Jeremy Burnett's the pride of Westminster, so he's come home, just like Royce Clayton, lives in Florida now, and a big fall off. 322 at home, 245 on the road, 24 home runs at home, 13 on the road. Fouls a pitch back, and the count 0 and 2. For Jeremy Burnett's with 37 home runs, it means he has hit at least 30 in six of the last seven years, including five straight from a stretch starting in 98. The one time it fell off was two years ago, he had 19 with the Mets. Here's the strike two pitch to Jeremy swung on and fouled away. So 26 pitches made already here in the first inning by Edwin Jackson. Of course that follows a pattern. Yesterday. Brett Tomko made 29 pitches in the first inning. The day before Brad Hennessy made 23 pitches. Jeff Weaver made 18 in his first inning. And. Kirk Reeder made 25 in his first inning. The only difference is you would fact that Jackson now trying to throw strikes desperately and the strike two pitch to Jeremy is swung on and foul back. Oh and two the count. Edwin Jackson with a record of two and one. Down two nothing here in the first inning. Helton who doubled in the pair at second and Burnett's waiting at the plate. Now the strike two pitch to Jeremy is swung on and hit foul outside of third. Looked like he almost hit that pitch off his ear. So 0 and 2 to Jeremy. Burnett's left hand hitter, big guy, runs well. He's 6 feet 210, but he's only grounded into six double plays. 0 and 2 the count. Jackson comes back and it's in the dirt. Nice block by David Ross and the count 1 and 2. Also with Helton at second watching Jeremy Burnett Jeremy has a good arm and he has nine assists he threw out Roger Cedeno at third base Saturday one and two the count to Jeremy Edwin Jackson looks ready comes back and it is swung on and missed so that'll give Edwin Jackson a lift. Jeremy Burnett has struck out 118 times, and with two out, the rookie J.D. Klosser coming up. Burnett's chasing a bad ball just about in the dirt, and down he goes. So J.D. Klosser, young catcher, it's doubtful we'll see much of Charles Johnson at this stage of the year. They really want to take a look at J.D. He was originally signed by the Diamondbacks six years ago. Hitting 326, left hand hitting catcher, nine RBIs, one home run. Edwin Jackson deals, fastball, swung on and missed. That thing came up in a hurry. And the count on one, that was 92. Klosser, for whatever reason, has hit better on the road than he has at home. Here's the strike one pitch to the young catcher. That's foul back, and that thing was almost past him. He's hitting 347 on the road and 304 in the hitter's paradise called Coors. 
He had his first home run and his only home run of Dennis Tankersley in San Diego on the 4th of September. Strike two pitch is just off the plate. Jackson changing up and the count one and two. Glosser was having a big year at Colorado Springs. Edwin Jackson trying to get him and end the inning. Young right hander ready. Another look back at Helton and the pitch inside. That straightens up Glosser, who immediately jumps back into the box as if to say, You're not going to intimidate me with a 94 mile an hour fastball. Flosser was up earlier, came up the end of June, but went right back down the 1st of July. 2 2 pitch to J.D. Flosser is a change very high, and it's a 3 and 2 count. 35 pitches made by Edwin Jackson here in the first inning, facing Jeffrey Darren Klosser, better known to the world as J.D. Helton at second, having driven in two. Rockies lead 2 0. And Edwin Jackson delivers, and it's a little number back to the box. Jackson lobs it over the green, and the inning is over. He had to work awfully hard, and he surrenders two runs, three hits, and one left. The end of half an inning, 2 0. Todd Helton. Colorado picks up two at the expense of Edwin Jackson, who made 36 pitches. And it was Todd Heldon who doubled off the scoreboard to put the deuce on that scoreboard for Colorado. Now the Dodgers with their usual lineup with the exception at second base is Sturz, Worth and Finley, Beltre, Bradley and Green, Jose Hernandez against a left hander playing second, David Ross and Edwin Jackson. On the mound, Sean Estes who was born in San Bernardino so he comes home a veteran 31 years old. Wound up 8 and 11 last year and has bounced back nicely 15 and 7. And the pitch to his tourist, low and away ball one. Cesar is tourist batting 293, four home runs, 59 RBIs, piling up the base hits. He has 185 of them, takes a high strike, and they count one and one. Estes throws in the high 80s. He has a cutter and a changeup. The 1 1 pitch breaking ball fouled off. That's the biggest pitch for him, that big overhand curveball. And he has a pretty good move. In fact, with 15 victories this year, if he wins one more, he will really establish a number. He comes back with a fastball inside. His 15 wins lead all National League left handers, tied for sixth all told, trying to beat the Dodgers. For the fourth time this year, that would make him the first Rocky ever to do that. 2 2 pitch, and his tourist promptly bangs it into left center on the dead run. A diving cry by Piedra, but there goes little Caesar rounding second on his way. The throw by Clayton got him. Oh, what a throw by Royce Clayton to Vinny Castilla. How Clayton got rid of the ball that quickly. Oh, you talk about a big league play. So his tourist doubles into the gap and left center and Clayton the cutoff man makes a brilliant throw. He barely got his hands on the ball before it was on its way to Vinny Castilla. Bernitz fielded the ball. Piedra died came up empty. Bernitz then fired it into Clayton from deep left center field and Clayton threw an arrow to third base in time to get his tourist. No argument about it. Jason Worth takes low. So his tourists a double, and then the play goes 8 6 5. And we have one out. Fine play by Royce Clayton. The 1 0 pitch to Jason Worth a strike. Jason hit his 16th home run, you remember, in the first inning yesterday with his tourists aboard, hitting 266. 1 1 pitch. That's lined in the left field in front of Piedra Bay's hit. So naturally everybody's saying if his tourists had only settled at second but he didn't so one out and a line drive single left. Take a look at the Rockies with the leather. The infield of Helton Mills Clayton and Castilla the outfield Piedra Burnett's and Hawk Helton Clayton and Castilla each leading the National League in fielding at his position. And you can understand Clayton on that relay as to why he's done such a great job. And here now is Steve Finley 
And he takes low ball one one and oh. Finley batting 272 he has 34 home runs 87 runs batted in. So Estes has been stung but he's gotten away with it. A double and a single but one out. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way and Finley backs off and it's ball two. And the count two and oh so Estes really starting off on a wobbly way. Finley is hitting 315 against left hand pitching Adrian Beltre is on deck. Finley has two of his home runs and eight RBIs look set a pitch low. So Estes gives up a double a single and he's down three and oh count to Steve Finley but he's still leading two to nothing. Sean set another look at first 3 0 pitch in for a strike and the count three and one. Sean Estes from San Bernardino but really grew up in Douglas Nevada went to Minden High School over there. He was a number one pick by the Mariners back in ninety one. Three one pitch to Finley fastball fouled off three and two. Sean six two about two hundred pounds thirty one years old lives over in Nevada. When he was in high school he was a 4 0 student. Adrian Beltre waiting on deck and Estes turned down a full scholarship to Stanford to sign with the Mariners. 3 2 pitch to Finley is inside and the Dodgers now have the time runs aboard. So actually Estes has not retired a batter but you have one out two on and Beltre coming up. Third baseman number 29 Adrian Beltre against Colorado probably deserves to have his picture on the wall of every post office in the state. In the last 18 games that he has played against Colorado, Adrian Beltre is hitting 471 with eight home runs, 25 runs batted in. Against Estes, he has two home runs, hitting 333. The left handed deals, big curveball at his feet, ball one. Since you're thinking about it, we can tell you Estes has given up 25 home runs. Adrian has hit 47 with 117 runs batted in. So it is two to nothing Colorado but it is a very shaky two nothing lead in the first inning. And Beltre with the tying runs aboard and one out. SD set checks the runners the 1 0 pitch is taken on the outside corner of fastball and the count one and one. So Beltre takes a look down to Glenn Hoffman. Estes really got to be as big as he is maybe two years ago as the result of weightlifting he put on an extra 15 pounds of muscle. Big curveball but he misses with it and behind two and one now. So Sean Estes gave up a double to his tourist who was thrown out stretching then a single to Worth then a walk to Finley. Helton had doubled in two in the top of the first. Estes out of a stretch another look Sean comes back with a fastball in there and the count two and two. We were talking about the Rockies and facing the Dodgers and especially here at Dodgers Stadium. Sean Estes has had a very tough time here and Clint Hurdle knows it despite being three and all against the Dodgers. His earned run average in his career here is over five and a half. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Adrian Beltre, there goes Worth. And the ball is lifted to right center. Having a play is Hoff, and then Worth gets back to second ahead of the throw. It was not a double steal. Jason took off on his own. Finley stayed at first. I'm not sure right whether field. he misread Number a sign Milton or what. Bradley. But Beltre flies to right. Two down, and Milton Bradley coming up. Milton Bradley is four for 20 against Estes. So Sean has given him a bad time up to now. Milton hitting 267, 19 home runs, 66 runs batted in. Estes trying to get out of the jam now, and the curveball is a little high. Ball one, one and oh. Played umpire Kerwin Danley with Dana DeMuth, Marvin Hudson, and Jim Joyce. 
Danley, a veteran, has had seven years in the big leagues, and Kerwin was born here in Los Angeles. The 1 0 pitch to Bradley taken for a strike. Kerwin Danley, the plate umpire, graduated from Susan Miller Dorsey High School, went to San Diego State. He was teammates with outfielder Tony Gwynn at State. The next one to Bradley in for a strike, and the count one and two. So Sean Estes, after a very wobbly start, he's made 22 pitches. That doesn't compare to the 36 made by Edwin Jackson. And the one two pitch coming up, and it's a big overhand curveball low, pushed out in front of the play by J.D. Closser, and the count two and two. So for Cesar Esturis, a long double to left center, tried to stretch it. Clayton made a great relay. And he has to be frustrated along as his teammates. Deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, and two out, two on. And the pitch to Milton Bradley. Esty spins a breaking ball high and away. Ball three. So the Dodgers will have him running, and Sean Green is on deck. So this is a huge pitch for Milton Bradley and the Dodgers. Two nothing Colorado first inning. Runners ready, they go. Fastball is low. Ball four. Boy, you want to talk about a wobbly inning. How about this for Sean Esty? He's given up a double, a single, and two walks, and no runs. Though so his tourists out at third was huge. The throw by Royce Clayton was magnificent. And the batter now is Sean Green. Green has had trouble with Estes in the past, hitting only 182 against him. And of his at bats, he has struck out, or oh, maybe 25%. So Estes going head to head against Green with the bases loaded, two out first inning. Fastball on the inside corner for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Sean needing one home run to tie Raul Mondesi with 163 all time. That would put him sixth. Worth, Finley, and Bradley are all out there. And the strike one pitch to Sean, another fastball, but this one's inside. And the count one and one. So Green, 28 home runs, 85 runs batted in, and it's standing room only out there on the base pad. Sean had a grand slam in the first inning at Dodger Stadium earlier this year against Mike Hampton, you might remember. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. 1 and 2. The 1 and 2 to Green with the bases loaded and two out. And the Rockies leading 2 0. The Giants not scheduled. Houston pounding the Cardinals 10 to 2 in the ninth inning. And Chicago doing the same to Cincinnati 12 1. Pitch to Green is a curveball off the plate. And the count 2 and 2. The Westies piling up the pitches now. The next pitch to Green will be his 30th. So the starting pitchers certainly do not look like they're going to be finishing pitchers, but then again, you don't see that anyway. So Edwin Jackson made 36, surrendered two, and here is Estes. Two and two to Green with two out. Sean Reddy deals, fastball swung on and missed. So Sean Green strikes out with the bases loaded, and the Dodgers lead three, the Rockies lead two. Two to nothing, Colorado in the second inning. Brad Hawk will start it off, then George Piedra and Sean Estes. Sean Green coming up empty with the bases loaded, so it is two to nothing, Colorado. Quite an inning to compare the starting pitchers as Jackson delivers and the left hand hitting Hawk takes a strike. Jackson made 36 pitches. Estes made 30. Jackson had five first pitch strikes. Estes had one. Strike one pitch way outside. Jackson had five 0 and 2 counts, wound up with one strikeout. Estes did not have an 0 and 2 count. However, when the dust settled, it's 2 0 Rockies. The next pitch to Hop outside, and the count two and one. Brad Hop, 25 years old, out of Fort Worth, Texas. He was an 11th round pick by the Rockies who went to school at Louisiana State. 
2 1 fastball line right at his turret. So Brad Hoff, a line drive to Cesar, one away, and the batter, George Piedra. Don't forget Wednesday, the Dodgers host the Rockies at 7 10. All fans 14 and under receive a free t shirt. Compliments of Dodgers.com. Give us a call or log on to Dodgers.com. And you know what? I would heartily recommend this being the last week of the regular season that you come out for a Colorado game. Meanwhile, Piedra hits one foul down the line back into the lower deck and the count 0 and 1. All three Giants games as you might imagine are now sold out. There are tickets available for tomorrow night Wednesday night Thursday night so if you can bring the kids see one of the last home games of the regular season. George Piedra P I E D R A home in Van Nuys and attended USC George hitting 316 left hand hitter Jackson back and that's pulled by the diving green picked up by Hernandez throws to Jackson oh what a wonderful play Jose Hernandez even though green diving could not come up with it. Hernandez hustling to back up and sure enough came up with it and there was young Jackson on the run able to handle a perfect throw. Pitcher Wonderful pitcher play Sean and Pistos. Alex Gora can nod in agreement you bet that was a good play by Jose. So two down in the second inning and the batter now Sean Estes. So Estes. Right hand batter swings doesn't get it and the count 0 and 1. Sean a good hitter he has 15 hits couple of RBIs and does not strike out by that he's had over 70 plate appearances struck out only 11 times line drive off Jackson's glove Jackson picks it up and throws too late. The Sean Estes and this is quite an inning Hoff hits a bullet. Right at the glove of Cesar Take is Torres. Piedra hits a one hopper that looks like it's going into right field, and Hernandez makes a nice play. And now Este singles off Jackson's glove. So he hadn't fooled anybody, and the battle will be Aaron Miles. Two runs, four hits for the Rockies, no runs, two hits for the Dodgers. And here comes Miles. So Estes at first. Davy Collins, the first base coach, Sandy Alomar over at third. Miles, left hand batter, waiting at the plate. And the first pitch hit late and foul outside of third. Aaron is a switch hitter, by the way, originally drafted by Houston. And he is the only Rocky to homer from both sides of the plate in the same game. He did that way back in April. He has a half a dozen. Chokes up on the bat. Strike one pitch there goes Estes off speed fouled away and I think Sean would have had a stolen base. But Miles took a hack at it fouled it away for Estes that would have been his first stolen base. But Miles fouled it off. You don't usually see pitchers running. But Estes took off. Rockies two Dodgers nothing two out second inning. Estes takes his lead. Green is not holding. Sean muddied from his dive on the infield on the ball that was hit by Piedra. The next one hit in the air to left center, but Finley was shading in the air, and that'll be that. So no runs, one hit, a man left. We'll see how the base running adventures affect Estes. The end of an inning and a half, two nothing Rocky. Edwin Jackson did a very good job of cutting down on his pitches. He made 36 pitches in the first inning, only 12 in the second inning. Of course, he can't change the score. Rockies lead 2 0. And in the bottom of the second inning, Sean Estes will face Hernandez, Ross, and Jackson. Another note about the Dodgers, and it shouldn't be too much of a surprise the way things have been going. Since the 31st of August, the Dodgers believe it or not even though they're leading by two and a half games they have certainly not been a clutch hitting ball club in fact 
when Sean Green struck out with the bases loaded it pointed it up. The Dodgers are hitting 196 with men in scoring position and that was before Green struck out. So they're doing it the hard way but they are doing it and they're leading by two and a half. Jose Hernandez who made a fine play on that ball hit by Piedra. Green diving couldn't come up with it but there was Jose and Ed Jackson covering the throw followed by a base hit so it was a big play. Hernandez has done very well against left hand pitching as we mentioned a few moments ago and he takes a pitch high ball one and the count one and oh. So Edwin Jackson trying to keep that valuable right arm warm wearing one sleeve and Jose a ringing single to left field. So boys as far as a good start that is not the story for Sean Estes and yet he is still leading. He has given up two singles a double and two walks in one inning plus and the Dodgers still can't get on the board. So with Hernandez a ringing single to left the batter now will be David Ross. Now Hernandez no surprise. He was hitting 325 against left handers. David Ross against left handers hitting 119. Estes fastball in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. No balls and one strike to David Ross. Jose Hernandez at first held on by Todd Helton. Now the strike one pitch and Ross looks at a slow curveball in for a strike. So David in a hole 0 and 2. Ross hitting 166, four home runs, 13 runs batted in. The young catcher perhaps pressing at the plate. He has struck out almost half the time and he takes strike three called now. The so David Ross caught looking on a pitch on the inside corner. One out. And Edwin Jackson coming up. The Westies just ran it in there. It got the edge. And Ross goes down. That's the, the cutter that Sean Estes throws. So one away, Hernandez at first. Jackson shows bunt. And the first pitch bunted in the air, lands at the feet of Castillo, who throws him out to Miles. Down to second goes Hernandez. So Edwin Jackson advances his man, and they'll leave it up to Cesar Asturias. Now One thing that Short Clint Hurdle does not want to do in this series is leave it up to the bullpen. Not only has the Colorado bullpen blown 31 games this year, including two of recent memory where they had five run leads, the bullpen is the worst in the league. They have lost. 36 was one reason pitching in Coors for the bullpen and Coors they are 13 and 19 and their ERA is six and a half so if anything else they're happy to be on the road his tourist checking in one of his four home runs against the left hander Estes big breaking ball that slipped not close to the strike zone. Royce Clayton making a wonderful play if he weren't with us. His tourist doubled all the way to the wall. Piedro dived, couldn't come up with it. Burnett's did. Looked like Cesar was going to have a triple. He takes a fastball away. And as he rounded second in pursuit of his 10th triple, Burnett's hit Clayton, and then Clayton got rid of it and threw an arrow to Vinny Castilla for the tag, and there was no doubt about it. No argument. 2-0 pitch is banged into right center and they're not going to take a run away from him now as his tourist cashes in Hernandez. Boy Sean Estes obviously doesn't have very much and it looks like the Dodgers might get a ton tonight. Remember he has a career earned run average here of almost six. So his tourist a line single to right his second hit cashing in Hernandez and the batter is Jason Worth.
As bad as Ashley's is here, Mike Hampton hates it even more. Mike Hampton's ERA at Dodger Stadium is 5.68, a hair more. But the Dodgers aren't through with Estes tonight. And here is Worth. Sean, a look over at his tourists and a throw over there. Cesar deserves attention, remember. He has 25 stolen bases. Jason Worth singled in the left inning. He's hitting uh, 300 against left hand pitching. He has eight home runs, 19 RBIs against lefties. Estes set, ready. Sean delivers, drops that curveball in. And it's an 0 and 1 count. The Dodgers against left hand starters this year, barely above 500. They are 22 and 20. And they're actually under 500 here, 9 and 10. Estes hands it his sides, looking at his tourists, and decides he better go over there again. Estes does a pretty good job as a veteran. He'd been pitching in the big league since he came up to the Giants in 1995. Comes to his hitter with a fastball high, and the count one and one. Two out, a run in. Rockies two, Dodgers one, bottom of the second inning. As Torres had just chased in the run, taking his lead. Now SD set, and the left hand is one one. Fastball is high, ball two. Two and one the count. So Estes, who made 30 pitches in the first inning and then ran a little bit on the base paths in the second, has now made 12 pitches in the inning and 42 in the game. 2 1 pitch to Jason Worth. Fastball low, ball three. So Estes has allowed a run, four hits, and two walks. Steve Finley waiting his turn on deck. Three and one the count to Jason Worth. SD set at the belt. Another look now to the plate. Very high. Ball four. So for a guy who has beaten the Dodgers three times this year, it is hard to believe the way he's pitching. And I'm sure Clint Hurdle feels the same way sitting back in the dugout. We saw him way back in April here, and Estes went seven innings, allowing only one earned run. That looked like the veteran. Then in LA, the 21st of July, he went six and a third and gave up four runs, but picked up a win. Then the last time we saw him here, the Dodgers were all over him. Finley takes ball one. He went five innings against the Dodgers the end of July, and in five innings, the Dodgers had eight hits and seven runs, and he's pitching like that kind of a game. 1 0 to Finley, who walked in the first inning. Estes ready, back with a fastball low, ball two. So everything he does is wrong right now, but he's still leading two to one. And on deck, Adrian Beltre. Two out, two on, two one, Colorado. Finley looking for a pitch to hammer. Estes checks now the 2 0 pitch swung on and hammered but foul. That'll go way off first base down the line in the second deck. So Finley gave it a rip and the count two and one. Steve 34 home runs 87 runs batted in. Player of the week you may remember from the sixth to the 12th of September. 2 1 pitch, very high, ball three, three and one. Boy, what a wobbly start. Sean Estes, a 15 game winner, who, by the way, is 8 and 1 against the West. It's almost as if Colorado would say, Will the real Sean Estes stand up? Finley waiting, 3 and 1. With his tourists at second, Worth at first. The runners go, and the fastball is low. Ball four. Now boy, you talk about somebody who's a short time pitcher. That would certainly appear to be Esty. He's not only given up four hits, he has walked four. And for the second time in two innings, the bases are loaded. Bob Abadaka going out to the mound, and Adrian Beltrace, who has crushed the Rockies in the past, coming up. Adrian talking to Kerwin Danley, the plate umpire. Abadaka 
in serious conversation. In fact, gestured hard with his left hand, almost as if say, "Come on, wake up." So Apodaca now goes running back to the dugout. The Dodgers loaded the bases in the first inning, and after Bradley walked to load them up, Sean Green struck out. Now the bases are loaded, a run in, and Adrian Beltre, who has just dismembered the Rockies this year, checking in. Estes from a stretch. Fastball is ball one. Meanwhile, the moon wants to see what's going on as it peeks over the edge of the roof. Two to one Rockies. Dodgers loading the bases twice in two innings. Estes out of his stretch. Beltre waiting. 1 0 pitch. Fastball whack to left. Back goes Piedra. Grand slam home run for Adrian Beltre. And the Dodgers lead 5 to 2. And the chant with feeling MVP as Adrian Beltre drives in four. He has 121 runs batted in for Adrian, his fourth career grand slam. And the Dodgers trying to bury Sean Estes now. 5 2 in the second inning. And the batter is Milton Bradley. Estes ready and deals. Fastball is swung on and fouled away. And the count 0 and 1. So Estes trying to come back. Fastball right out over the middle of the plate. Wasn't no edgy to it at all. And Adrian jumped on it for the slam. Now the breaking ball low. The crowd wanted Beltre to come out and take a curtain call. He's busy taking fives in the dugout. So with two down in the inning, remember Hernandez led off with a single. Then Ross struck out. Jackson sacrificed. The tourists a base hit to cash in Hernandez. Walks to Worth and Finley. And if ever a guy looked like he was ready to take one on the chin, Sean Estes. And sure enough, he served up the grand slam to Adrian Beltre. So the Dodgers hang a high five on the scoreboard and lead 5 2. 2 and 2 the count. Here comes Estes and the fastball grounded to third. Up with it is Castillo. Flips it across to Heldon for the elusive final out. With a very happy Adrian Beltre, a very downcast Sean Estes as Beltre sends it sailing into the bleachers. And at the end of two, at the end of the third inning, five to two Dodgers. Adrian Beltre hits a grand slam and clears the air, so we get a full shot of a full moon as Royce Clayton takes a strike. Beltre with that 48th home run. Ties the record of home runs for a third baseman, Mike Schmidt, in 1980. The pitch to Clayton down and away, one ball and one strike. So Adrian now posting huge numbers 48 home runs and 121 runs batted in. The other third baseman, Vinny Castilla, has 128. Clayton, a foul off to the right. Coming over for it is David Ross and overruns it, makes a one hand catch and slams into the railing, but he's okay. Whoa. David Ross getting a round of applause. All of a sudden, the ball was behind him. He reached back and gloved it, had an ice cream cone, and ran into the padded wall, but he's okay. Whoa. What a play by David Ross. So the young catcher. Getting a chance to play has not hit much but he means a great deal behind the plate. And one away and the batter now will be Todd Helton. Todd Helton doubled off the scoreboard to drive in two in the first inning. And Vinny Castillo on deck. Dodgers five Rockies two top of the third. And the pitch by Jackson in there and the count one and one. So Edwin made 36 pitches in the first inning, cut it all the way back to 12 in the second inning. And the 1-1 one -one pitch to Heldon, foul back, 1-2. and two. Heldon batting 344, he has 32 home runs, and with his 2-RBI double, 
He now has 93 ribbies. Helton has been very hot. Average at 343 hadn't been that high since the middle of July. He probably reaches for an off speed pitch, a change up, and bangs it into center. So Helton, a double, now a single, and the batter will be Vinny Castilla. We mentioned earlier that Castilla has been hitting well, especially the last nine. Helton, meanwhile, arms extended for a change up away, then just put the bat on the ball. So Todd has a double and a single. He's knocked in both runs. And talking about knocking in runs, here's Vinny Castillo. 301 home runs in his career. Jackson ready and deals. Curveball and a high fly ball into deep left center. Back goes Finley to the wall. It is gone. Jackson's curveball is straightened out, and Vinny Castilla hits it out. So Vinny Castilla now has 130 RBIs, and it's a 5 4 Dodger lead, just like that. Big slow curveball, and Castilla just waited, timed it, and drove it out. So the Rockies undeterred by the Dodger five the slam by Beltre get right back into the game. Jeremy Burnett takes in the dirt down in the Dodger bullpen. Elmer descends is going to get up. So the Dodgers can't be very happy with Edwin Jackson. And we're in the third inning one out. Of course let's face it the Rockies can't be very happy with Sean Estes. One and oh, the count of Jeremy Burnett hitting 285. He grounds one up the middle. Hernandez to his right, backhands and throws him out. Two down. So J.D. Clauser coming up. He hit back to the box in the first inning, the rookie catcher. So Clauser checking in, batting 323 for a while. And Vinny Castilla, meanwhile, getting congratulations in the dugout for his two-run home run. 130 RBIs and 34 home runs. So, I mean, we have two heavyweights at third base with Beltre and Castilla. And, of course, Todd Helton, a two-run double, and he was aboard with a base hit when Vinny hit it out. Glosser chasing one in the dirt almost, and the count 0-2. Five runs, five hits for the Dodgers. Four runs, six hits for the Rockies, and we're in the third inning. For the Rockies, they're just playing out the schedule. The strike two pitch on the way, swung on, popped in the air foul. Beltre is digging, he is there, he's got it. So Closser fouls out, but Vinny Castilla got that slow breaking ball, hit it in the bleachers, 5 4 Dodgers. After Adrian Beltre gives the Dodgers a grand slam, Vinny Castilla comes back with a two run home run, and the Dodger lead is 5 4. Big sloppy curveball that almost hit Sean Green on top of the head. One ball and no strikes. Estes ready, and Sean comes back, and it's swung on and missed. So Sean Estes and Sean Green, Sean up. One and one to count. At one time, Sean Estes wore 32 in honor of Sandy Colfax and Steve Carlton. Fastball is swung on and missed one and two. In 98, he was then with the Giants, and so was Oral Hershiser. Here's the one two pitch coming up to Sean Green. Estes delivers, and it's strike three called. The Sean Green strikes out twice, one out in the third. And the battle will be Jose Hernandez. Jose Dodgers Rockies Thursday at 7:10. All fans in attendance receive a Tommy Lasorda 55th anniversary commemorative coin. Compliments of Yellow Book. Call 323-2241. Hit or log on to Dodgers.com. Anyway, Estes wore 55 when he was with the Giants. Curveball in there nicely. Big slow spinner. But when Oral Hershey had joined the club, Estes the kind of a guy who would give you the shirt off his back. So he gave Oral his 55, but he's back to wearing it with the Rockies. 
Throws hard but misses inside. One ball and one strike with his fastball. Hernandez single to left in the second inning, scored a run. He's been very, very effective against left hand pitching. And the next one swung on and missed. He comes tumbling out of the batter's box. He swung so hard. Jose hitting 331 against left handers. And among other things, all 11 home runs. He's got two more since, but he's had 11 home of his 13 against left hand pitching. So tonight, Alex Cora sits down. Curveball is hit late just to bounce it back to Estes. He guns it over to Helton. Two down. Of course, with a veteran pitcher, and especially a veteran pitcher on the road, you wonder about a guy like Sean Estes. Number one, he's on a mound. It's not the one he's normally accustomed to, and sometimes uh, any pitcher really needs a little time to get squared away. And it could be, now that he's retired three in a row, He's starting to settle in. We'll see. And the batter is David Ross. Here comes the first pitch, swung on and missed 0 1. It's funny when something happens, it brings back a memory with a rush and something you almost thought you've forgotten. The pitch in there again. When David Ross made the catch of the foul ball off Royce Clayton, and it was a great catch, he slammed into the railing just by the visiting dugout bat rack and immediately I saw Earl Batty the strike two pitch is grounded foul do you remember Earl Batty Well, Batty was a catcher and he had a neck like a large oak tree and he needed it chasing a foul ball he hit the railing here I thought he had broken his neck but he was OK thank the good Lord but uh, came back with a rush during the World Series pitch low and inside ball one. One and two to David Ross. Two out, third inning. Dodgers five, Rockies four. Estes ready now, and the one two pitch is low. Two and two the count. So now it's a question is the veteran pitcher Estes settling in? And if he is, will the youngster, 21 year old Edwin Jackson, settle in or have to go out? It's five four Dodgers, but we're only in the third. The pitch to Ross. Oh, what a curveball. Strike three call. Look out now. Estes might very well be very much at home. He retired four in a row. And at the end of. We have three innings in the books. The Dodgers leading 5 4. Our Aflac trivia question Adrian Beltry has tied Mike Smith's season record, home runs by a third baseman. Who holds the National League record for RBIs by a third baseman? Now remember, Vinny Castilla has 130 ribbies. Adrian Beltre has 121. But what third baseman holds the record? We'll give you the answer in a little while. Remember a couple of minutes ago, I was saying that Colorado is saying, will the real Sean Estes stand up? I mean, it didn't look like Estes at all. He couldn't find his way in the first two innings. However, the real Sean Estes stood up in the third. The big question for Estes now, the fact that he has wasted a lot of bullets. He has made 70 pitches in three innings. Meanwhile, Edwin Jackson has made 61 pitches, and he's working to Brad Hawk, George Piedra, and then Estes. Hawk, left hand batter, and a high fly ball into deep left field. Finley to the wall, it's gone. It was backhanded by a fan on the staircase out there. And so Brad Hoff ties up the game 5 5. And the fan who made the catch then throws it back on the field. But that 5 to 2 lead sure didn't last very long as first Castilla hit one with a man aboard. And now Brad Hoff, the boy from Fort Worth, unloads. So 5-5 five, five in the fourth inning. Dodger bullpen will get busy again. George Piedra hits one foul outside of first down the line. Scott Stewart, the left-hander, now gets up in the bullpen. George Piedra lives in Van Nuys. I mentioned that he attended SC, but I read that in a hurry. He takes low. Actually, he planned to attend SC. 
but instead the Dodgers signed him in 1997 and George made the usual stops and then got away and now here he is with the Rockies left hand hitter rolls one to Hernandez and Jose throws him out so Piedra lost a base hit on that fine play by Hernandez back in the second Sean inning this time a simple roller so one away and Sean Estes coming up Estes a good hitting pitcher and he singled off Jackson's glove his 16th hit of the year he even hit a grand slam in his career against of all people Roger Clemens so he can hit SD batting 232 right hand hitter fastball drives him off the plate ball two two and oh Jackson is due to lead off in the bottom of the fourth inning five five in the fourth That's a strike two and one Rockies have lost three in a row and eight out of twelve and whacked to left field by Estes that has a chance in fact it is in the seats and let's see what happens down the line as Estes carries it right into the seats. And I'm watching the third base umpire Jim Joyce who gave it a different call and I think they're going to call Estes back Sandy Alomar and now here comes Clint Hurdle. I really wasn't sure he did not give the home run call. He put two hands together over his head and no doubt was saying that a fan out there caught the ball and of course he had the best view of it Hurdle. Doesn't have very much to say. We can take another look. The fan certainly reached out. I'm not sure how much out or whether the ball was already in the stand. Maybe another angle will show it. The umpire puts one hand over the other wrist, indicating that fan interference. However, Jim Joyce is going to meet with the other umpires. It's really hard to tell on TV was the fan reaching out or because he was in the second row and they're going to have a meeting. So we have to wait and see Clint Hurdle hands behind his back just waiting for the decision. So is everybody else including Sean Estes. Now let's see a nod by Joyce. They're going to call Estes back. Hurdle. Feels like he's had his pocket pick. There was really no way to tell whether that fan was reaching to his left or was he reaching over the stand. You be the judge. See if you can see him. That's too bad. I mean, there's so much at stake. Violators are subject to arrest and ejection. Well, Jim Tracy's gone out after seeing Estes hit that ball so far. I think Edwin Jackson has had it. Yep, he's going to go out. He got a little older tonight. It's 5 5, but there's a runner at second. A 5 5 tie here in the fourth inning. Sean Estes, who thought he hit a home run, winds up with a double. Fan apparently leaning over and making the catch. So young Edwin Jackson matures a little bit more as he gives up two in the first two in the third one here in the fourth to tie it and he goes out with a possible go ahead run at second base all part of a liberal education and the happy guy from Mount Holly North Carolina Scott Stewart will pick up for Edwin Jackson Scotty in his 10th game one and oh. And he'll be facing Miles and Clayton. Miles, a switch hitter, and he turns around immediately to bat right handed. And that's a strike. 
Stewart is 6'2, about 225 pounds, 29 years old. He was born in Massachusetts, but grew up in North Carolina. Went to Gaston, North Carolina High School. 0 and 1. Fastball missed, one ball, one strike. Miles having a very good year, hitting 295, half a dozen home runs, 46 runs batted in. Little guy, but loves competition. In high school, he liked football and wrestling as well as baseball. Bad ball, trying to drive it to right field. One and two, the count. So Stewart gets a break as Miles tries to do too much. Miles will be 28, middle of December. 5 5 in the fourth. Estes at second with one out. So he's wearing the score out there on his back. And that's going to be hit into right center. So here comes Estes to score. And the Rockies take a 6 to 5 lead as Miles goes down and whacks it into right. So with SD scoring that run is charged to Jackson and he now has given up the six runs. So Miles hit one after missing a fastball off the plate. He hit one below the knees for a base hit but he has a little stroke you know he chokes up on the bat. He knows at 5'8 he's not going to try and drive the ball out of the park. And he's really had a wonderful year. He's two for three and a run batted in. And now Royce Clayton. Clayton singled, fouled out when Ross made that fine catch. Big chopper off the glove of Beltre by his tourist. That's a base hit. So now you have two on. One run in. After the home run. A two run First inning and the Rockies oh, lead 6-5. So Beltre got his tips on it to deflect it. His tourist couldn't make the play. So Clayton is now two for three, just like Miles. And of course, that is a very dangerous way to play the Rockies. Miles leading off has two hits. Clayton two hits. Here's Heldon with two hits. So six hits at the very top of the lineup. Heldon doubled in two, singled. Vinny Castilla on deck. And a hard ground ball inside first and down the line. Here comes Miles to score. They are going to stop Clayton as Hernandez was ready to gun it in. It is seven to five Rockies. So Helton, who was hitting 153 at Dodger Stadium this year, is trying to make up for it at one night. He has a double, a single, and another double. So Todd Helton is three for three as three runs batted in with one out. You have second and third and Vinny Castillo at the plate. And what are they going to do with Vinny? They're going to put him on. So Castillo hit a two run home run in the third inning gets a walk and Jeremy Burnett will be coming up. Elmer descends will be the batter in a moment. Uh, Elmer descends is the pitcher. And coming up in a moment is Jeremy Burnett. Yeah, that would be something, huh? So in a moment, ball four to Vinny. So the bases are loaded with one out. Little guy bouncing around in Dad's lap. The Dodgers are bouncing around, losing seven five. And Jeremy Burnett checks in. He struck out, grounded out. Oh my, we have twins over there. Yeah, it is indeed. What a great sight. <laughs> Not a great sight for a young Stewart. The bases loaded, one out, and Burnett, who has struck out and grounded out at the plate. Ball one. Rockies two in the first, two in the third, three in the fourth. Burnett's having a far better year this year than last. 
and hits one down the right field line didn't hit it hard and it's going to hook foul into the stands didn't have enough sock to it. The so one and one accounted Jeremy. At third base Royce Clayton at second Todd Helton and at first Vinny Castillo. Edwin Jackson has been charged with six runs. Stewart has given up one. One and one. Off the plate, ball two. So in the inning, the Rockies have had a home run, two doubles, two singles, and a walk. They've scored three, and there's only one out. J.D. Closser on deck. Burnitz, who has a tendency to strike out, he has struck out 118 times. So Sean Estes, who looked like it was going to be a terrible night when the Dodgers roughed him up for five in the second inning, now suddenly he has settled down and he's leading 7 5 and has retired the last four in a row, which is really something considering the way he pitched in the first two innings. Two and two to Burnitz. Adrian Beltre's grand slam is now of distant memory. And down goes Burnett, striking out a second time. 0 for 3. Trying to uppercut that curveball and comes up empty. And now J.D. Closser, a switch hitting catcher, and he'll turn around to hit the other way. Closser is hitting 409 right handed, but it's really a case of he hadn't had very many chances. 9 for 22. Base is loaded, two out, 7 5 Rockies. Top of the Rockies lineup, boy, it is top heavy. Seven hits amongst the first three hitters. That's a strike. They're not only seven for nine, there's four RBIs. And four runs scored. Helton has driven in three and scored one. Miles has scored twice. Clayton has scored once. Castilla scored on his own home run. 0 and 1. Off the plate. 1 and 1 to Closser. So Scott Stewart coming in after Estes doubled, and he gave up a single to Miles, a single to Clayton, a double to Helton. And a walk to Castilla, then struck out Burnett's. Ground foul outside of third, down the line, one and two. Closser, by the way, is the ninth man to come to the plate here in the fourth inning. And Jackson sits and ponders and wonders. Just 21 in the 9th of September. One and two to Closser. Fastball, two and two the count. So Clayton, Helton, and Castillo are at the ready. And deuces are wild indeed. Two balls, two strikes, two out, three in. Seven five Rocky. Fastball in the dirt. Nice save by Ross. Three and two, the count to Closser. On deck is Brad Hoff, who started the inning with a home run. Left hand batter. Big pitch now with the bases loaded, two out, and a full count. Closser hitting 320, one home run, nine runs batted in. Curveball, he reached for it and popped it up. It'll be Hernandez. That might have been ball four in watching the way he swung at it. But anyway, Stewart's out of the jam. Jackson, however, could lose, and it's 7 5 Rocky. 7 5 Colorado, bottom of the fourth inning. Sean Estes has been busy. 
You know, he had the infield single in the second inning. In the fourth inning, he thought he hit a home run, went all the way around, then was sent back out to second base, then had to score on a base hit to right field. So we'll see if that's taken anything away from him. He'll face Antonio Perez batting for Scott Stewart. That's a strike. So Antonio hitting 333. Hasn't played much for the Dodgers. Had a good year at AAA. Did get his feet wet in the big leagues with Tampa Bay. 0 and 1. Curveball strike. This is a different pitcher out there now. This is not the left hander who looked like an imitation in the first two innings. Estes would appear to be back on his game. Dodgers roughed him up for five runs. And down goes Perez. So that'll be the fifth strikeout. One out. Sure, and here comes Cesar, Cesar is first. Sure. Remember the Aflac trivia question? Belfry is tied Schmidt. Home runs by a third baseman. Who holds a National League record for RBIs by a third baseman? And the answer, yeah, if you're looking at him, Vinny Castilla, 144 six years ago. Vinny's not doing badly. He has 130 this year. Meanwhile, Adrian Beltre, with a grand slam home run, has 121. So Vinny's still out in front. One ball and one strike. Tell you the Dodgers could have been worse off. J.D. Closser, we thought might have swung at ball four and then we looked at the videotape and I mean it wasn't close. So with Closser, if he takes that pitch another run at least would have come over it would have been a four run inning instead of three. 7 11 for the Rockies. Five and five for the Dodgers. Is tourists two for two. Fastball, crack bat, little ground ball to Miles. So it is indeed the Sean Estes that we've been looking at for years. No batting. Not the one who was out there the first two innings. He has settled in. He's retired six in a row. He started off walking. Four and giving up five hits and five runs. That's not the way you win 15 games. Sean 3 and 0 against the Dodgers this year. Ball one. As we mentioned, no Colorado pitcher has ever beaten the Dodgers four times in one year, so he's trying to do it. That's a strike. One and one. Worth single to left and walk. And a breaking ball at his feet. However, that might have hit the bat because the plate umpire, Derwin Hanley, put up his right hand. One and two the count to Jason Worth. That pitch kind of ate him up. Seven five Rockies fourth inning. Fastball just off the plate. That's about as hard as Estes throws. That was 90 on the gun. Doesn't throw much higher than that. Another one. Back to back fastballs. That one dropped down to 89. So three and two with Steve Finley on deck. No thumb sucking, so he's decided to use an alternate. Whoops! Strike three called on Jason Worth. And now Estes has not only struck out a half a dozen, he's retired seven in a row. And now he looks like Estes in his 7 5 Rockies. Rockies leading the Dodgers 7 5. Rockies led 2 0. Dodgers led 5 2. Now it's 7 5 Colorado. Wilson Alvarez comes in. It could be, and we're just speculating on our own. There's no inside information, but you wonder about the veteran Alvarez. If he pitches well tonight for an inning, two innings, whatever it might be, and if his hip is not hurting. Do you think maybe Wilson Alvarez might start against San Francisco Saturday instead of youngster Edwin Jackson? 
So this could be an important appearance for Alvarez. The veteran is seven and six, made 15 starts in and out of the bullpen because of his hip. So we will see now. Brad Hop, who started the fourth inning off with a home run. He was one for two, had lined out and homered. Seven five Rockies. That's a strike. Hop, we mentioned earlier, went to LSU. He had a big wedding, they tell me. About two years ago, 450 guests. One and one. As the father of three brides, I shudder. 450 guests. You better hit, son. One and one. He's doing all right. Three home runs, eight RBIs. One and two. Hop, 25 years old, 6'2, 200 pounder, out of Fort Worth. So the kid against the veteran. Now back. Brad Hop, drafted four years ago by the Rockies. Tell you the fellow the Rockies have, a young outfielder. Who could be a star? His name is Matt Holiday. He's banged up. He has a swollen elbow, and he doesn't figure to play anymore this year. But he is a good-looking player. He had 14 home runs, 57 runs batted in, and Holiday, while he was in there, hit 290. So when you're talking about the Rockies for the future, Holiday is one of them. Two and two to Hawk. H A W P E. Down he goes. So the Dodgers using youngsters Jackson and Stewart now relying on a veteran, and he just takes care of Hawk. One away. George Piedra coming up. George from Van Nuys. Dodgers had him. Eventually, the Cubs sent Ismael Valdez to the Dodgers to get George and pitcher Jamie Arnold. Right. Piedra, 25 years old, even 680 pounder, had 18 home runs a year ago at Tulsa. Good running speed, stole as many as 29 when he was in the Dodger organization at Vero Beach. Breaking ball strike. So Wilson Alvarez trying to take the kids to school here. Oh, and two. Fastball in there. So that'll do it for Piedra. Class is not quite adjourned. He has struck out Hawk and Piedra. And coming up, Sean Estes. You know, it was one of the most dramatic games in history. It gave us one of the more unbelievable moments. Now you can hear about it from the players that lived through it. Yep, game one of the 1980 World Series, Beyond the Glory. That'll be Sunday at 8, right here on FSN West 2. Yeah, game one of the 88 series. Remember that one. Strike to Estes. So the teacher, Wilson Alvarez, takes Hop and Piedra to school. Now a pretty good hitting pitcher, Sean Estes. Fouled away, and that got the plate umpire, Kerwin Danley. Whoa. Boy, we were sorry to, to read about Ed Montague. We've seen some umpires taking their licks lately. Kerwin got it on the jaw. When we were in Colorado, 
We saw the plate umpire take one on the hand. That was uh, Greg Gibson. I'm not sure if Greg broke a finger or not. Danley, it's a knockout punch, and David Ross empathizing with him. Anyway, Ed Montague, a very popular umpire, had to be hospitalized with high blood pressure, and Ed is now home. Little dribble to third. Beltre on the run. Takes care of him. Seven to five in favor of Colorado as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Dodger attack tonight, a grand slam by Adrian Beltre. Sean Estes wobbling all over the place in the first two innings, and then it's as if Adrian Beltre's grand slam got his attention because since then, Estes has retired seven in a row. So Sean pitching to Finley, Beltre, and Bradley in the fifth. Finley, who is hitting over 300 against left hand pitching this year, walked twice against Estes. He has a home run in the past against Estes. That's a strike. 0 and 1. Seven runs, 11 hits for the Rockies. Five runs, five hits for the Dodgers. Outside, inside, and a one ball, one strike count. Estes, 31 years old, lives in Nevada from San Bernardino, his birthplace. And Finley lifts it up on the right side of the infield. Aaron Miles. One away. Now the batter, Adrian Beltre. Beltre flagged to right in the first inning, and then in the second, hit the fourth grand slam of his career, and that turned it around for the moment. That made it five to two in favor of the Dodgers, and the Rockies stormed back after Beltre took his applause. Vinny Castilla hit a two-run home run. Brad Hobb homered. The next thing you know, the Rockies are leading seven-five. Strike. Right. Oh and one. So Adrian right there with Mike Schmidt 48 home runs and 121 runs batted in one and one. One and one. Ball two two and one. When Sean Estes signed with the Rockies, it was in January of this year. They really didn't have too much faith in him. They gave him a one-year deal because he was eight and eleven last year with the Cubs. Ground ball to Miles. Two down. So the contract was not particularly high. They also had some money for incentives, but they said the contract was only going to work if he made the team. So he was really iffy in spring training. I mean, here's a fellow who won 19 games seven years ago, 15 games four years ago, and then struggled. And now he's had a rebirth, and he's a 15 game winner. He's also made 90 pitches, and he's only in the fifth inning. And of course, what was it Winston Churchill talked about the soft underbelly of Europe. Well certainly the soft underbelly of the Colorado Rockies would be the bullpen. So the pitch count for Sean Estes will become very very important. Bradley grounded to third and walk. Nine in a row retired by Estes. So he's done a complete about face. Ball one. Sean Green on deck would not agree that Estes has made a complete about face because Estes struck him out with the bases loaded back in the first inning. And down goes Bradley. 
10 in a row retired, so I should say Estes is on the beam after the two. On this day, way back in 1961, Sandy Koufax struck out seven to break Christy Mathewson's strikeout mark. It gave Sandy 269. Interestingly enough, he did it pitching 112 fewer innings than Mathewson. Let's go back to this one. And as we go to the sixth inning, Colorado leading the Dodgers seven to five with Miles, Clayton, and Helton coming up against Wilson Alvarez. Ball one. By the way, we we're talking about a new Estes. Really, it's the old Estes. His pitch count is right down the numbers. 30 in the first inning, 26 in the second, 14 in the third, 13 pitches in the fourth, only 11 pitches in the fifth. He's retired 10 in a row, five of the 10 by strikeouts. So after the Dodgers had a golden opportunity to really chase him in the first two innings, as so often happens with veterans, you let him get off the hook in the first two and they have a chance to settle in. He has settled in. Struck out seven and ten in a row. But again, remember pitch counts. For Estes this year, 32 starts. He has one complete game. So that would mean 31 starts if you subtract the nine. 31 starts and 182 innings, not quite six innings. Fly ball to Bradley. One out. So Wilson Alvarez is doing what the Dodgers hoped he would do. He's restored order. He had to come in to start the fifth inning. He's retired four in a row. And here is Royce Clayton. Royce has been busy. He is two for three. He has scored a run. He has stolen a base and he made a wonderful relay to get his tourists in the first inning. Seven five Colorado in the sixth. That's right. Of course for the Dodgers not that they're complacent about it but they certainly can't be discouraged trailing by two twice in the recent series in Colorado. The Dodgers were down by five and rallied back against the Colorado bullpen. Curveball whacked into right center. Finley says he has it. True to his word. Two down in the sixth inning, and Todd Helton coming up. First baseman, Todd Helton. Now you would think Wilson Alvarez, a crafty left-hander, could certainly handle Todd Helton. You'd be wrong. Helton is hitting 400 against him with three home runs. Tonight, Helton, two doubles and a single, three for three. After failing to do anything against the Dodgers, he's really come in a rush tonight. Three hits, three RBIs. Ball one. On deck, Vinny Castilla. Held in 32 home runs, 94 runs batted in. Get three RBIs tonight. One and one. A couple of years ago, he was the first player in Major League history to post 100 extra base hits in consecutive years. But, you know, it's really not fair between you and me. I mean, with Colorado, gee. He's a good player. One and two the count. But every time I hear some hitting record that goes down in flames and then the guy played half the year in Colorado. Can't have much faith in that. And of course this is a 162 game season. Used to be 154 and everybody was at just about sea level. You can see the difference there, road and home on home runs. He's a good player. Two and two. And I'm not going to get too excited over Ichiro either. I mean, if if they tell you, hey, he just broke George Sisler. Oh, really? Sisler played 154 games. Ichiro is going to play 162. 
And if you calculated the year that George Sisler had 257 hits, you figured out what he would do with the extra games, you know, from 154 to 162, he'd have 270 hits. So why would I get so excited over Ishiro? I wouldn't. Two and two the count to Todd Helton. Chasing a bad ball. So it shows you the veteran Alvarez. He comes in, retires six in a row after the kids, Jackson and Stewart, had troubles. He ended five and a half, seven five Rockies. Seven five Colorado, bottom of the sixth inning, and Sean Green to start it off. Ball one. Green came up with the bases loaded in the first inning and struck out. Then came up with the bases empty in the third inning and struck out. One and one. On deck, Jose Hernandez. John Estes has retired 10 in a row. Foul ball, one and two. So the Dodger lead is going to be either two or three when this one is over. And then the Giants go back to work in San Diego, and the Dodgers will be right here tomorrow night. Got him on the corner with the curveball. And Sean arguing with. Hmm. So he strikes out a third time. Slow 82 mile an hour curveball that just drifted. Now where the catcher catches the ball doesn't make any difference. That's not the point. It's where is the ball when it's coming across the plate. So Sean felt it was low and outside. Erwin Danley said no down he goes. Boy Hernandez trying to hit a four run home run with the bases empty. He almost came out of his shoes with that swing. That was that change up that must look like a basketball. 0 and 1. Meanwhile. Cubs pounded Cincinnati. Houston ripped the Cardinals. And another chapter in the wild card. That's the way it looks right now. The Giants idle. So there is still quite a bit going on in the last week. Fastball fouled off. Colorado plays four here. And then we'll play the final three games in Houston while the Giants are playing here. That's as hard as Estes throws. That last fastball was 90. One and two. Curveball. And Jose got a little bit of it. Hernandez single, scored a run, and hit back to the box. So the big thing now. I'm sure for Clint Hurdle and Bob Apodaca, the pitch count for Sean Estes. One and two. On the corner. So just a little curveball, and that is strikeout number nine for Estes. Don't forget, October the 5th, Fox Sports begins a month long journey starting with the division series. Then exclusive coverage of the championship series and culminates with the World Series and the crowning of the champion. The drama begins October the 5th on Fox. Ross has shot up the middle. Miles is on it, jumps in the air, but lobs it. And Ross is aboard with a base hit. Miles, I think, did not have to jump in the air. I think if Miles feels the ball and sets, he's going to throw out the catcher. He's going to run over and grab it. Now, if he stops and throws, I think he gets him. But instead, he leaps in the air and he just couldn't get anything on the throw. Good effort. Infield single for Ross. And now Wilson Alvarez is going to give way to Tom Wilson. Betting for Alvarez. Number seven. Estes, being the competitor he is, didn't want it let by the mound. He tried to do a Don Drysdale and kick at it with his foot. So here comes Wilson. 
The bat for Alvarez. Jose Lima, remember, stuck his hand out. It's an instinctive thing. So Estes tries, can't do it. That breaks his string. He had retired 12 in a row until the infield single. And now Tom Wilson. Wilson hasn't played much, but he has impressed. He takes some pretty good swings. He's two for eight as a Dodger. Has a very strange stance. Watch him lean back. Look at that. Fastball. However, he leans back when the time comes. He's ready to take the normal swing in the hitting zone, but uh, it is an interesting stance. Whether it was Stan Musial with his feet together, curled so that he was looking at the pitcher from around his right shoulder, the spread eagle stance of Joe DiMaggio, wide open stance of Luis Gonzalez. High fly ball. You know what? He just missed hitting that thing. And it's going to be caught by Jeremy Burnett. So Wilson gets under it, a fly ball. The Dodgers leave Ross, and at the end of six, seven five, Rocket. Tonight, Dodger Stadium became a bit of a shooting gallery. Adrian Beltre hit a grand slam home run in the second inning, took a bow, but before the Dodgers could enjoy it very much, Vinny Castilla hit a two run home run in the third inning. Brad Hoff, the young right fielder, went the other way and hit a home run. And the next thing you know, Sean Estes almost hit a home run. A fan obviously interfering, and a win is a ground rule double. Estes did score and has turned in a gem. He's retired the last 12 in a row. Bob Abadaka, no doubt the pitching coach said, are you all right? And Sean Estes nodded, yes. He has made 106 pitches so far, and that pitch count is awfully important. Tom Wilson, who batted for Alvarez, stays in the game behind the plate, so that Duaner Sanchez goes in David Ross spot, hitting eighth in the lineup. Duana with a record of three and one, and he'll be working on Castilla, Burnitz, and Klosser. Fastball hit foul. On one. Vinny Castilla tonight popped up, hit a two run home run, and was walked intentionally. Juana Sanchez in his 65th game. So he's certainly going to be a veteran by the time this season is over. 0 and 1. Fastball lifted to left field. It's playable. Worth is there. So Castilla, fly ball to left. For the Rockies, center fielder Jeremy. As soon as Castilla hit it, he knew he missed it, didn't get enough of it. When you've hit him as many times as he has, and I think the worst feeling for a hitter is to get your pitch and not hit it. And I think that's what happened with Vinny. He thought he got the pitch to drive and he hit under it. So one out in the seventh inning. Burnett's struck out with runners at second and third in the first inning. Grounded out in the third and struck out with the bases loaded in the fourth. Seven five Rockies were in the top of the seven. Twenty four year old Juaner Sanchez working on Jeremy Burnett. Burnett's 0 for 4 against Sanchez in the past. Two and one. Dwaner is from the Dominican Republic, still lives there. Originally drafted as a free agent by the Diamondbacks. Came up for a taste of the big leagues with Pittsburgh a year ago. One and two, now two and two, the count to Jeremy Burnett. Jeremy with 37 home runs, 106 runs batted in. He's hit as many as 38 home runs. He did that with the Brewers. 
course with the Brewers he would come up there and it was going to be feast or famine so he wound up hitting 38 home runs he also struck out 158 times that year fouled away so he struck out twice tonight and Burnitz has struck out 119 times of course he has struck out 150 times twice and you know who's probably going to set a record this year is Adam Dunn of Cincinnati. You know Bobby Bond struck out 189 and last time we checked I think Dunn had struck out 183 times with a week to go. See you later Jeremy that's the third time he strikes out. So two out in the seventh and J.D. Foster coming up. Catcher J.D. Foster. So just as Sean Estes turned things around on the mound the Dodgers have turned things around after Jackson and Stewart Alvarez came in retired the side in order in the fifth and sixth Dodgers have now retired eight in a row Estes retired 12 in a row until the infield single by Ross seven five Rockies that's in the dirt two out seventh inning. Closser 0 for 3 hit back to the box fouled out popped up hitting 316 young hitter just kind of feeling his way along with a runner at second he hit back to the box bases empty fouled out bases loaded popped up. Got his first hit against a good pitcher, Ben Sheets of Milwaukee. He's the fellow you may remember who chased a bad ball in the fourth inning. Would have forced in another run. One and two. Oh, yeah. Young hitters going to school. The so down goes Klosser. Duana Sanchez takes him one, two, three, and at the end of six and a half, the score remains the same. Seven, five. Oh yeah, hold on to Dad. Don't forget your Teddy. And the time is running out. The uh, last couple of games. And remember, the Giants series is sold out. So if you can, hope you'll be out here the next couple of nights, or at least one of them. That's a strike to his tourist. Cesar doubled in the first inning and was cut down on a great relay from Jeremy Burnett to Royce Clayton to Vinny Castilla. That cost the Dodgers a run because Worth followed with a base hit. 7 5 Rockies in the seventh. Estes has allowed one hit since Beltre's grand slam, and that was an infield single. Hideo Nomo throwing in the pen. Two and one to his tourist, batting 294. Ball three. Now, the spotlight will go down to the bullpen for Colorado. Steve Reed and Javier Lopez. And remember, you're looking at a bullpen that is more gasoline than anything else trying to put out a fire, and Estes knows it. Three and two the count to Cesar Asturias. Asturias two for three. Brown foul. So Estes who's averaging about six innings a start pushing himself into the seventh. He made one hundred and six pitches. But he's getting deeper into the count now. And he's now one hundred and twelve. Three and two. And he wants a new ball. 
sometimes especially a veteran pitcher can pick up a ball and he wants the seams to be raised a bit maybe just didn't like the feel three and two fastball gobbled up nicely by Castillo wow what a nice play that ball was drilled one out uh, Castilla takes a hit away from his turret. Jason Worth coming up. I remember with the Dodgers many years ago back in Brooklyn, if you were primarily a breaking ball pitcher as opposed to, you know, a hard throw, you'd want that seam raised a little bit so there'd be more resistance. And what the pitchers would do, they'd take a ball and Give it to Gil Hodges, the first baseman, and he was so strong and had such big hands. That's going to be lifted to right field. And Hawk is there. And Hodges could pinch the ball and actually raise the seams a little bit, or at least so the pitchers told me. All right, Estes has two out in the seventh, and Steve Finley, the batter. Finley has walked twice, popped up, 0 for 1. Cubs beat Cincinnati 12 to 5. Houston did a number on St. Louis 10 to 3. They were all over Woody Williams. Finley hitting 272. Ball one. On deck, Adrian Beltre, the Dodgers down by two, so they would love to have Beltre get up, representing the tying run. So it's up to Finley to get on. That's right. One and one to Steve. Estes anywhere from 88 to 90 miles an hour with his fastball all night. Curveball. And it's hit to Helton. And that's it. So among other things, and that was a very important out, Beltre can't tie it up when he leads off the eighth. And it's 7-5. Seven, 7-5 five. Seven, five Rockies, eighth inning. And Clint Hurdle in a huddle with Sean Estes. Meanwhile, Brad Hoff lined out, homered, struck out. Oh, yeah. Time for the Sandman. Too comfortable in Dad's lap to pay attention. One ball and no strikes. Ball two. Brad hitting 233, three home runs, eight runs batted in. Fastball challenged him at 93 in the count, two and one. Juana Sanchez, about 185 pounds, but he can sure bring it, as the players say. Two and one. Interesting for the Dodgers, the offense has just stopped. Adrian Beltre hit a grand slam home run in the second inning. The Dodgers have one infield single since. That's all, one. And that was David Ross. Three and two to Hoff. Paid attendance tonight. 36,958. 36,958. Be a good idea. Take in a ball game one of the next three nights because the Giants series is sold out. Round foul. Meanwhile, Bob Apodaca giving Sean Estes a bit of a pep talk, I think. Estes trying to win his 16th. Be a big night for him. Trying to be the first Rockies to beat the Dodgers four times. 15 wins is a franchise record for a left hander. And he started off wobbling all over the place. And then all of a sudden, as so often happens with veteran pitchers, he got into his zone and he's allowed one infield single. He has struck out nine. Three and two to Hawk. Foul 
called away. You can bet that Estes is going to push himself trying to win his 16. He'll face Beltre, Bradley, and Green in the eighth inning. So Sanchez trying to hold that Tiger here in the eighth. Three and two to Brad Hoff. And he drives it foul off first base way out of play. Playing at Colorado Springs in Triple A and they tell me that's a hitters park. But Hoff managed to hit 14 home runs in the month of August. Boy, that got Colorado's attention. He's had nine pitches so far in this at bat. Three and two. And ball four. So the Rockies get their first base runner since the fourth inning. When Castillo won. So with Hop at first. George Piedra coming up. Mike Sweeney is coming out on deck. The bun foul of the plate, 0 and 1. George Piedra in the minor leagues last year at Tulsa. He hit for the cycle twice. I don't care what league you're in, that's really something. Basically a line drive hitter, but the last two years playing at Tulsa and then Colorado Springs, he started to hit some home runs. Piedra five years ago had a nightmare. He suffered a fractured vertebrae in his spine that finished the season for him, but he's come back nicely, thank goodness. Gets the bunt down. Sanchez to Hernandez. So the sacrifice works. And for Clint Hurdle, now we know why he was talking to Estes. We're also going to have a runner at second base. And the runner is Chu Freeman. Remember, he's the fellow we talked Here about. Please, for the Rockies. When he was a little this. guy, he used Mark to make Sini. sounds of a choo choo train. And he got the nickname Chu. Runs well. The Rockies, number 21. The Chu Freeman, Freeman, who will then stay in the game and play the outfield, might play center and Burnett's move to right. Sweeney coming up to bat for Estes. So no doubt Clint Hurdle was giving Estes the pep talk. Hey, you've done a great job. I don't want you to go out there. You made enough pitches. And the Dodgers are going to take their chances against Miles and Clayton. For Estes, you can imagine he has a sinking feeling. He goes seven innings trying to win his 16. After the first two innings, he was absolutely outstanding. But now, He's going to hand the game over to the bullpen. Dodgers twice were down by five runs in Colorado and exploited the bullpen weakness. The Second league has done game. the same. The Rockies bullpen has lost 36 games, blown 31 saves. So they can't be too happy giving them the game. Meanwhile, here's Miles. With two on and one out. Miles single to center, fly to center, single to right, fly to right. So Aaron Miles two for four, hitting 295. Chokes up on the bat, just tries to make contact, sprays the ball all around the ballpark. Pull foul on one. Aaron Miles, a switch hitter, and he's been in 130 games. And he's done a fine job. 
Meanwhile, Adrian Beltre is going to lead off in the eighth inning. The Dodgers would like to have him come up maybe third in the inning, but he's going to be leading off. Seven runs, 11 hits for the Rockies, five runs, six hits for the Dodgers. Game one of the four with Colorado. How have the Rockies played the Dodgers? If they win tonight, the Dodgers and the Rockies will have split 16 games. Time. Tom Wilson out to talk to Sanchez. They certainly have not had any experience with each other. Wilson, of course, spent part of the year in Las Vegas catching Edwin Jackson. Sanchez trying to throw strikes. Oh, and one to Miles. One ball, one strike. Rockies got two in the first inning. Dodgers got five in the second. A grand slam by Beltre. But then Castillo homered with a man aboard to get it 5 4. Hawk homered a tie. And in a wild fourth inning. Rockies got two more to take a 7 5 lead, and now here we are in the eighth, and the Rockies threatening again. Popped up. Going out is Turris watching the umpires. He'll back up. Now they call the infield fly rule. So Miles can't do anything. He pops it up, and now the batter is the veteran Come Royce on. Clayton. Shortstop Royce Clayton. Clayton is a possessor of two hits tonight, though he has 155 hits. Hundred and fifty five hits. I'm going back through his career. This is it. That's a career high for Royce Clayton. One fifty five. Two on two out eighth inning seven five Colorado. Royce batting 280. Fouled away. Royce went to high school at St. Bernard High School in Playa del Rey and then signed a contract with the Giants with a little added money for a college education. Two on, two out, eighth inning. 7 5 Rocky. One and one. Sanchez hits 92 on the gun and a 1 1 count. He certainly does not want to allow Clayton to get aboard because then he has Todd Helton on deck. And Helton has his stroke back. He's picked up three hits tonight. Breaking ball fouled away. Good hard breaking ball. One and two. So Clayton two for four on the night trying to extend the inning. Big at bat with Helton waiting. Down in the pen Mike Venifro begins to loosen up for the Dodgers. Maybe for Helton if need be. One and two. And there goes Freeman, and he's going to run them out of an inning. Oh, oh, choo choo. No wonder he dropped the other two. He takes them right out of the inning, and the Rockies fail to score in the eighth inning. And at the end of seven and a half, seven. Bottom of the eighth inning, seven to five Rockies. Jeremy Burnitz moves over to right field to make way for Chu Freeman who ran off the track in the eighth inning. And now the Dodgers will have Beltre, Bradley, and Green against Brian Fuentes. Fuentes, touched for four runs on five hits yesterday, is brought back in. And Beltre waiting. Change for a strike, 0 and 1. Beltre a grand slam home run fly to right and grounded out.
fastball on two. For Fuentes going ahead to head with Beltre. Adrian is 0 for 2 against him. That's all. Ryan is from Merced, still lives there. 6'4, 220. Went to Merced Junior College. Drafted by the Mariners. Breaking ball, and he hung it. Base hit. Remember now, this bullpen for Sean Estes, after a strong seven, he's got to be scared to death. So Beltre on an 0 and 2 pitch, a base hit, and now here comes Bradley. Milton Bradley has walked, grounded out, and struck out. Ryan Fuentes. One and three, an earned run average over five. He's given up five home runs. Fastball, ball one. The Fuentes, five home runs in 43 innings. He's allowed as many hits, in fact, one more hit than innings pitch. And he's behind 2 and 0. If ever there was an arson squad, it would be the Colorado bullpen and Fuentes trying to get out from under the rep. 2 and 0 the count to Bradley. Right, 2 and 1. Brian has worked awfully hard in looking back at his record. This is his fifth appearance in six days. That's asking a lot. Two and two to Bradley. Seven runs, 11 hits for the Rockies, five runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. Sean Estes struck out nine, going seven. And now Fuentes gives up a base hit, 0 and 2, and runs the string out on Bradley. And waiting on deck, Sean Green. And that's going to be a base hit to left field. Beltre will hold at second, so the Dodgers now have the tying runs on with nobody out. And to be honest, I think the Dodgers greet the Colorado bullpen like old friends. And Bob Apodaca going out to try to help 20s. Green, Hernandez, and then Sanchez spot. Eric Gagne is still in the dugout. Nothing for him to do yesterday. And of course, yesterday, Gagne picked up his 45th save, made 35 pitches, working two innings. He did not pitch on Saturday, and he did pitch the ninth inning and make 20 pitches Friday night. So Gagne sits and rests, and meanwhile, Brian Plenty's in a mess. So Sean Estes and all his great work could very well come apart. And the Dodgers held quiet after the second inning. Now have a chance to bust loose. Adrian Beltre hitting his fourth career slam and now has 48 home runs. So Brian Fuentes comes in and immediately is in the soup. Back to back singles. Here is Green. Sean Green is a hungry hitter to say the least. He struck out with the bases loaded in the first inning. He struck out leading off in the third. And he struck out leading off in the sixth. And you know what? The Rockies are looking bunt. Todd Helton is on the grass. Castilla is in on the edge of the grab. So they were sure that Green's going to bunt. How many times has Sean Green sacrificed? Zip, nada. 0 and 1. 1 and 1 the count. Sean Green against Brian Fuentes is 0 for 9. Two on, nobody out. Eighth inning, 7 5 Rockies. Curveball, one and two. 
Boy, you wonder how Sean Estes feels trying to win 16. Wobbly the first two and then a strong five to finish at seven. And the game on the line here. Beltre and Bradley are out there. Little ground ball up the middle. Miles can't get it. So that'll score Beltre. Bradley will go to third. And the Colorado bullpen has struck again. So Fuentes comes in and gives up three hits, one run, and here comes Clint Hurdle. And Miles just missed, at least trying to keep the ball on the infield. Steve Reed, the veteran reliever down in the bullpen, and he's going to be brought in. So for Sean Estes, no doubt a voice is saying, I told you, I told you. It's 7 6 Colorado. Nobody out, and we'll be back. Your sports report, that'll be coming up next. First and third, nobody out. Steve Reed, who was born here in Los Angeles, 38 year old, been in the big league since he came up to the Giants 12 years ago, and a record of 3 and 7. The Dodgers will have Alex Cora bad for Jose Hernandez and then Robin Ventura with bad for Duaner Sanchez. So the Dodgers have what they want. They've gotten into the kitchen. They have gotten into the Colorado bullpen. Bradley is at third. Green is at first. Brian Fuentes came in and gave up three straight hits and now Reed. Alex with 10 home runs shocked the people up at SBC Park hitting 270 with 46 runs batted in. Reed has allowed more hits than innings pitch. Strikeout to walk ratio is two to one. Tying run 90 feet away and that's ball one. One ball and no strikes down in the pen Giovanni Carrara loosening up. Green at first Beltre scored Bradley is at third it's seven six Rockies. One ball and no strikes. Remember we showed you Eric Gagne before and we mentioned he pitched Friday night and then two innings yesterday. That's a strike. We understand that Jim Tracy said before the game he would not pitch Eric Gagne tonight. One and one the count to Alex Cora. Jim trying to take advantage of the Colorado pen. And popped it up. It will be Helton. So Cora, a pop fly to Helton, one out. Bradley anchored at third, the same for Green at first. And the batter now will be Robin Ventura. Your attention, please. The Dodgers are hoping that Ventura can do what he did in San Diego, if nothing else. In San Diego, twice he came off the bench and hit fly balls about 390 feet to center and they wouldn't mind settling for a scoring fly ball right now. Ventura has won this year. Robin has five home runs 27 runs batted in and as a pinch hitter he has three home runs and 13 RBIs. One out way out in front of it. Waiting his turn on deck would be Jason Grabowski as Ventura is batting and Grabowski would bat for Wilson. 0 and 1. Sean Green if nothing else trying to distract Sean has stolen four out of six. Well Steve Reed who is certainly an experienced right hander. 
been with the Giants, the Rockies, then the Giants again, the Indians, Braves, Padres, Mets, and back to the Rockies. And that's 0 and 2 the count. So Robin Ventura trying to get a piece of Steve Reed and get the game even. Milton Bradley, the tying run, 90 feet away. Sean Green at first. Reed just sat out a two game suspension. He had an incident with the Giants on June the 6th. He was ejected for the first time in his career that day after arguing a hit batter. He had hit A.J. Przinski, the Giant catcher, and had to sit out two games. So he's at least rested. One and two to Ventura. And a little roller off the glove. The time run scores. And for Sean Estes, you really, you really have to feel badly for him. Meanwhile, Ventura hits one off Reed's glove, and the Dodgers tie it up. And all of the work of Estes goes down the drain. So Ventura is out 1-3. Bradley brings it in. Both runs charge to. Brian Fuentes and we have a 7 7 tie with Grabowski now coming up and Sean Green at second base. Your attention please to the Dodgers batting for Wilson number 33 Jason Grabowski. So Grabowski up there against Reed. 7 7 in the eighth. So this would probably be the 32nd blown save by the Colorado bullpen. Grabowski has never faced Reed before. One and one. Boy, he take a big rip. Seven runs, 11 hits for the Rockies. Seven runs, nine hits for the Dodgers. Milton Bradley bringing the tying run home. One and one. Sinker for a strike. Sidearm fastball. You get fastballs, a slider, and a changeup. Especially if you're a left hand hitter, you got to look for that change. One and two. Clayton, Helton, and Castilla coming up in the ninth inning. Breaking ball off speed and down he goes. So Grabowski strikes out. The pinch hitters don't hit the ball out of the infield, and the Dodgers tie up the game. And at the end of eight, we're even 7 7. Well, we have a moment. Remember one of the great World Series games, certainly in Dodger history, and especially here at Dodger Stadium. Game one of the 1988 World Series. Well, you'll hear about that game from the players that lived it on Beyond the Glory. That'll be Sunday at 8, right here on FSN West 2. Well, as expected, the Dodgers get even against the Colorado bullpen. Alex Cora stays in the game at second base. Behind the plate, Brent Main. And on the mound, Giovanni Carrara, remember, Eric Gagne is not going to pitch tonight. I would assume that Maine would bat eighth and Carrara would bat ninth. And Maine, by the way, now they're going to change that. They say Carrara bats eighth. Okay. And Maine ninth. So all three Dodger catchers have been in the game. Ross started. Then Wilson pinch hit and stayed in. And now Maine goes behind the plate. And he'll handle Carrara. And Royce Clayton will start it off in the ninth. 7-7. Seven, seven. Right. Clayton had single twice. He was two for four. And he was left at the plate when inexplicably Chu Freeman decided to steal third. And made the last out in the eighth inning. 
which is a mortal sin in baseball to make the last out at third. Breaking ball one and one. Giovanni is in his 38th game ERA of not quite two and a half. He is five and two and the opposition hitting 231 against him. Breaking ball a chopper backhanded by Beltre at the bag. Wow. So another nice play by Adrian Beltre. One out top of the ninth. And again the chant MVP backhand short hop and now Jim Tracy with Helton coming up wants to go to Benefro in the Dodger bullpen. So Carrara got one and now Benefro the left hander will be brought in to pitch to Todd Helton. It is that time of the year. Juaner Sanchez has pitched in three straight games. Giovanni Carrara has pitched in three straight games. And Mike Venafro is going to pitch in three straight games. Venafro brought in to face Helton. All alone down in the Dodger bullpen now is Yancey Brazavan. We're in the ninth, one out, 7-7. Seven, seven. So Brazaban waits and here's the battle with Helton. Venafro and Helton. Well, Helton is 0 for 3 against him. Big curveball. Helton has walked twice, but 0 for 3. On deck, Vinny Castilla, and I assume Brazaban is getting ready for him. That's a strike. One and one to count. Helton batting 346 facing Venafro. Hit foul down the line out of play. So it's a big assignment for Venafro just to take care of one of the top hitters in the league. Mike is from Tacoma Park Maryland. He's 31 years old lives in Florida. Originally drafted by the Rangers. Over the top fastball. So after all the sidearm pitches, that's uh, one of the few times since he's been with the Dodgers. I've seen him come over the top. And that was kind of a surprise. And a high fastball. And Helton went after it. That would have been a ball. The Carrara rooting for Venafro, and he has done his job striking out Helton. So now you have to assume that Yancey Brazaban will be called in to face Vinny Castilla, and that's exactly what's going to happen, and we'll be back. Well, the Dodgers nursing their bullpen, brought in Carrara to get Clayton, brought in Venafro to strike out Helton. Now they bring in Brazaban to up against Vinny Castilla, and of course, Yancey Brazaban went to school Saturday when he was roughed up for the Grand Slam home run by Pedro Feliz. Well, another home run threat. Vinny Castilla hit a two run home run in the third inning check in with two out, ninth inning, 7 7. Fastball for a strike. Basically, you have a fastball hitter against a fastball pitcher. Castilla 34 home runs 130 runs batted in little ground ball to short and his first over the green so the Dodgers now use their bullpen to get out of it and now they look to the 7 7 tie bottom of the ninth inning. Now remember the Dodgers have used Jackson Stewart Alvarez Sanchez Carrara Venafro and Brazaban Jim Tracy said before the game he would not use Eric Gagne so the Dodgers are hoping to end it in the ninth and not get involved in some lengthy extra inning game for the Rockies of course it is a mere exercise and for the Dodgers it is a huge game. They'll either lead the Giants by three with six to play or two with six to play. 
is Torres Worth and Finley coming up. Is Torres single and double, lost a hit to Castilla in the seven. Strike. On one. Is Torres batting 294 with four home runs, 60 runs batted in. One and one. Trying to make Reed get that ball up. Castilla plays him in on the grass. Helton is near the bag at first. And slice down the left field line foul. And a great running catch by George Piedra. Boy, what a fine play, especially for a visiting player who is not too familiar with the ballpark. He had to come a long way and then run parallel with the tarp roller on his mind, I'm sure. And the chair boy got out of the way. Fine play by George Piedra. Very tough on the road. One out. Now Jason Worth. Single to left and walk. Struck out and flied to right. Jason Worth 0 for 1 in the pass against Reed. Breaking ball, ball one. So the veteran Steve Reed. One ball and no strikes. Ball two. Two and zero oh to Jason Worth. Breaking ball strike. Two and one. Steve Reed went to Lewis and Clark College in Oregon, then signed as a free agent. Steve is 6'2", about 215, 38 years old. Breaking ball, whack to left. Piedra on the run is going to have to play it on a bounce. So once the Dodgers saw Sean Estes leave, things have improved dramatically. That's the fourth hit for the Dodgers against the Colorado bullpen. And the batter is Steve Finley. Finley has hit Reed in the past. He is three for 10 against him. That's ball one. So the Dodgers, the winning run at first, one out, ninth inning, 7 7. And Gagne watches. Steve Reed has been in 50 or more games 12 consecutive years. He's been in over 800 games. You want to talk about a guy with a lot of experience, you're looking at it. One and oh. That's a strike. One and one. He gets down in that delivery. It almost looked like he's pitching uphill. If you remember, the left hand of the Dodgers had who eventually played for the Mets, Sid Fernandez. Sid would get down and look like he is. Pitching uphill. One and one. And that's going to be whacked into left center, base hit. Freeman over to cut it off. And breezing to third is worth, and the winning run, and another half a game in the lead is 90 feet away. Boy, what a bullpen. Half five hits in an inning and a third. To break the hearts, I'm sure, of many of the Colorado starters. And who's up? Adrian Beltre. Glide to right, had a grand slam home run, grounded out, singled, and scored in the eighth inning. And a downcast Clint Hurdle, his chin hitting his chest, walking out to the mound.
Boy, how many painful trips has he made to the mound this year? Whoa. He can even smile about it now since it's only an exercise for the Dodgers, a huge game. Meanwhile, one soul throwing in the Colorado bullpen, Scott Dolman. And Clint's going to stay with Steve Reed. Adrian Beltre, who has four scoring fly balls, Milton Bradley on deck in case they decide to walk Beltre. First and third. And the Dodgers. At the expense of the Colorado bullpen trying to win it here in the ninth. Down 7 5. There's ball one, so they're going to walk him intentionally. Twice in Colorado, the Dodgers were down by five and pulled it out at the expense of the Rockies bullpen. So being down by two didn't mean like much of a challenge. And in a moment, Bradley will be coming up with the bases loaded and one out which means among other things Reed has to throw strikes. So Bradley will be in a strong spot. There's ball four. For Beltre only the ninth time this year that he's got the intentional walk. Milton Bradley has grounded into 12 double plays. He has 19 home runs. Tonight he has walked and grounded out struck out and single a left. So the crowd of thirty six thousand nine hundred and fifty eight rooting for the Dodgers to win it here. The Rockies have to play the infield up and it's Reed versus Bradley. Bradley is 0 for 2 against Reed in the past. Sean Green on deck. That's a strike on the outside corner. Jason Worth at third. Steve Finley at second. Adrian Beltre at first. One out. Ninth inning, 7-7. Seven, seven. One ball and one strike. And fouled away upstairs off third. One and two to count to Milton Bradley. As we said, the Dodgers certainly don't want to get into any long extra inning game, not after using seven pitchers tonight, not when Jim Tracy vowed not to pitch Gagne. So they'd like to win it right here and now and go home. And a hard ground ball under Miles Glove, and the Dodgers win it eight to seven. So the Dodgers down seven five, pull it out eight seven at the expense of the Rockies bullpen. The Dodger lead now three games over the Giants with six games left. And while the Giants play San Diego, the Dodgers have three left with Colorado. And Bradley getting the base hit on the drawn in infield to win the game. Miles almost came up with it, but not quite. And so Milton Bradley becomes our player of the game as the Dodgers race out to congratulate him. He runs 12 hits for the Dodgers. And tomorrow night, game two of the series, as the Dodgers try to exploit a Colorado staff, Jamie Wright will go against Kaz Ishi, then Jeff Francis, Odalis Perez, and finally Thursday, Jason Jennings and Jose Lima. So there it is, a big three-game lead with six games left. Not a bad number to dream on tonight, and the so-called magic number, any combination of Dodger victories and